Welcome back, everybody, to the 2023 Derby City Classic. This is round two in the one pocket division. This is Tony Bloom facing Skylar Woodward. Tony has one loss. Like I said, we're in round two. Quick, uh, quick update. I'm your host, Scott Frost, the freezer. And I wanted to speak real quickly about the guy racking the balls. That's Tony Bloom. He's the one that got my older self back into the game and i'm very thankful he did um tony bloom owns a company called mohawk metal he and his wife both julie bloom and tony got me back into the game of one pocket and i'm starting i'm going to start playing more rotation but they're just great people and most of you out there know them now and if you don't at the next event please say hello as good a people as you can get i've learned a lot about business, a lot about patience. I've learned a lot from both of them, and I'm happy to call them very good friends. Tony is not an avid one pocket player. He's actually a bar table player from the Northwest, um, Eugene, Oregon, to be honest, and he's trying to learn the game of one pocket. So I'm not going to be hard on him here, even though I might be hard on him here. Everybody knows Skylar Woodward, and let me speak on Skylar. Skyler's one pocket game has really come up in the last year and I'm the first one to admit that and give him the credit his firepower and straight shooting ability mixed in with with the basics and the moves of the game have really really made him a threat now look at this break if I could break him like that every time I'd probably be somebody I mean holy cow you can hear Julie Bloom in the background laughing. <laughs> Skyler knows he's in a trap. Shane Wolford comes over and takes a look and says, "What happened here? You'd think we're like 26 shots into the into the game already, but this is right after the break." So uh, Skyler's immediately in a trap, and if you notice up table, there's no chance he can kick one rail. And I, I do believe he's got a three rail kick uh, between the three and six. I'm not positive, but it looks like that's maybe the only way at the ball. But I would say the four. Oh no, I, there's no way he can kick three rails. The four and eleven are in the way, so he's got to kick this one rail with extreme left hand English basically aiming just right of the top right diamond let's see what Skyler does he is in a trap so Skyler probably doesn't know that Tony's an amateur at this game this isn't bad if he triples him up but it's not great either so I know Tony Bloom Tony Tony loves to play the game. He loves to play top players. Um, he's a student of all pool games. He just loves the challenge. Oh, this is hit really well. Oh, he's got a cut here on the nine. His angle is right. If he stays to the left side of that table, he can spin that in with left hand English. No doubt. Uh, he might not be able to reach it. He's left-handed. I would think he could lean a little bit over the table. Again, he's not 6'3 like myself, but I still think that he could get there. Actually, I think Tony's right-handed. I'm going to have to check that again. Let me check my stats. I'll get back with you in a, about two more rounds. Looks like he's going to use the bridge and cut it. He's got to spin this with a little left, and I would put the cue on the on the lower part of the bridge here. He's just going to chop it with center. Nicely done. Look at the cue ball. Where's it going to end up? It's got to go or slow down, one of the two. It's not bad. Not bad at all. So he could he could put a little low right on this, drawing off the edge of the seven and guaranteeing himself a shot on the ten. Not a lot of low right, but the cut's thin enough that he's going to catch the seven full enough to gain position. And he's just leveling out, doing his best to pocket the ball. 
You're not going to come away with a shot here. As you see, he does have a cross bank on the 10. And the way these balls are positioned, I might just go all out, commit to crossing this 10 in. Um, you can't play scared against Skyler or he will eat you alive. He's choosing to either... Yeah, he's choosing to rip, or I didn't know if he was choosing to rip those or pocket the 13. Not bad. Nicely done. Very, uh, very good start for Tony the Tiger. I couldn't have faulted him for banking that ball, though, because you're not going to get a lot of chances against this young gun. Skyler looks like he's going to maybe stick him behind these balls. Okay, he's just elected to put him up table. Tony and Sky are having fun. They've they've become fairly good friends. Julie in the background. Julie, the owner of royalty core one of the best if not in my opinion the best custom truck grill company in the world they make grill accessories truck accessories like uh, headache racks emblems one of the best products on the market for sure as far as custom truck grills based out of Eugene Oregon check them out royaltycore.com Tony doesn't mind sending him up table, but you don't want to leave this young man the straight back on that, that three ball. Is he going to play it free and just draw back, or is he going to try and stun over? I think he's just going to draw back. As I stated, you don't want to leave him a bank on that ball. I think... Sky can be a little difficult to predict at times, especially in a match where he knows he's probably a, a, a pretty heavy favorite. I had talked to Tony earlier this evening. Let's take a look at that three ball. I mean, he hit it really, really pure. Nice shot. These are four and a quarter inch pockets. Uh, Diamond made the adjustment this year, which I know... 90% of the players in this tournament really like it. There's probably 10, maybe 15% that don't. Um, but but it really brings out more play in the game, whether you're playing nine ball, one pocket, or banks. I think they've made a great move. We've been asking for it for years. And they're going to make some adjustments next year uh, to where we can fit the tournament in. And, and nobody will uh, ha go into cardiac arrest because... It seemed like that almost happened a few times this year with the players. Tony's electing. Not a huge fan of that. You don't want to leave him on the left side of those balls, even though they're tied up. Uh, you can you can leave your opponent some type of a bank, and he's going to have cover. Might be able to bank this 10 and get cover. It's not terrible, but one of the rule of thumbs is you just don't want to leave the cue ball on the wrong side of the stack. He didn't want to leave Sky a bank. I guess he didn't really think about bringing the cue ball back down somewhere around the chalk. He's going to spin this in between the 7 and 8 and try and bring the cue ball. Oh, he hit it. He hit it bad. So Tony, Tony the Tiger trapped him. And Tony's got the sport and the badge. Doesn't bother him when he's down on the ball. I think he's just got to roll this eight in. He's got to trust himself here. Stay down good. Follow through. Roll it in. At worst, you're thinking hang it up. Pocket speed. A nice stroke. Just overcut it a hair. He put a good stroke on the ball. This is another one of those banks. You don't want to leave the kid from Kentucky. I don't know that he's going to get much after that unless he can follow through to the other balls. Well, he's got a double bank on the 15 here. No doubt. Yeah, he can, 
he can double bank this ball and either stick or maybe even just nudge the 12 or stop his cue ball to, to get a shot on the 14. Yeah, he just played to get it close or make it. Tony's going to have to kick one rail, try and pocket Sky's ball. Not much else here to look at. You've just got to kick to the left side rail and try and pocket the 15. It's a fairly big ball. You can catch it rail first. You can even catch the top side of the 15. It will go. Yeah, he sees the shot. High cue ball. And just let it float down. Nice and easy. Nicely done. Rail first. That'll work. But, he's left the kid from Kentucky, the 11, if he elects to shoot. Play that cue ball over to the left center diamond on the long rail. There's two ways he could play. I like making the 11. Especially if you hit it with pocket speed. I don't think Sky's going to hit it with pocket speed. He likes to shoot everything with authority. And he did. He's overcut this bank. <clears throat> if you guys heard that scream in the background, I believe that's the one and only Michael DeLotter. Might have won a match. Now I'm looking here... And I'm looking at that six ball. I think he could elevate just a little bit and, and stop behind the 14. He's going forward. The problem with going forward is if you don't get this close, you're going to leave your opponent some type of a bank possibly. And he has. He's left the four ball. Or excuse me, is that the eight? Yeah, maybe the eight. But I'm pretty sure that Sky's going to play this. And so what I was saying is that you could stop almost and almost snooker him on, on all of these balls if he elevates banking that six. He's hit it really well. And that's the only issue with going forward. And that was the four ball. And pocket the six and then probably get an angle on the 14 to drop below the 10. Just like so. Or the 12, excuse me. Just going to drop down and spin behind it. Oh, he's missed the ball. So here I'm probably, well, I'm trying to figure out what Tony will do. I think I'm going to bank this ball for sure. Ball count Tony Bloom with the original three started with. Skyler Woodward made a comeback so far. Five balls to three. Tony is banking. Nice. He's under hit this ball. Hit it a little heavy. And Sky can cut the 14 at worst. He could cross the 12. I think he's just going to. Oh, he might be. He might be uh, acting a little nice to Tony right now. Tony's got a couple options here. He can roll the 14 in, or he can try and rip the 14 and the 12. I don't mind either option. This kind of brings me back to earlier in the game when Tony could have cross-banked the, the 10. I think if he, if he just goes all out and tries to cross-bank that 10 ball, it's not terrible. It's a pretty good shot. If he goes all out, it, let's just say he hangs it up. The way the balls were laying, Sky might have got a couple, but but he puts pressure on Sky at that point. And if he makes it the way the balls were laying, Tony could have won the game. Hmm. 
Is he two railing this ball? No, he's just playing safe. Sky's showing a little respect for Tony's game. Now you got to be careful here, right? It's very hard not to leave Sky a return bank, so I wouldn't mind clipping the right side of that 13 at this angle, bringing the cue ball back over to the lower left side of that side pocket. Excuse me, to the lower end of the... To the left of your lower side pocket. Looks like he's probably playing that. I think this will keep him off of pretty much all the banks. Nicely done. Nicely done. I don't know if we can get that straight on view. I don't know if I like this view here. I don't know if Sky can... If he can see the top side of that 11, it might bank. Is he crossing the... Yeah, he's, he's playing. Yeah, it's not a bad shot, but Tony does have a bank on this 10. You just level out with high cue ball. You've got, you've got to make something happen here. Elected to play safe. Looks like we're going into the wedge, the Nick Varner wedge. Skyler, of course, one of the members of Team USA this year, and he was the the vice captain. I think Sky played better than any any player on Team USA this year, and I, I think that Sky was built for that format. Uh, no offense to Shane Van Boning, but I feel like I feel like he's probably playing a little better than Shane in that format. Oh, Sky's talking to me, by the way. <laughs> I was messing around. I told Tony he needs to go at him, get aggressive. Sky said no coaching. <laughs> It's a good shot. Very containing. One of Tony's um, strengths is definitely defensive play. He uh, he has a good mind for for playing the object ball and the cue ball. Uh, that's a it's what we call a flyer. I know he's left him the two, and he might have the right angle to drop down on the 12 if he can follow forward. Looks like he's got a pretty good angle. Yeah, he's definitely got a little angle for sure, so he could follow forward here. And you just don't want to overthink on this. This is the thing about one pocket. When you see something that you know you've got to shoot at, commit to that. Don't worry about anything else. Just commit, commit to pocketing the ball. Drawing the cue ball here is no good. You've got a chance to possibly run into the seven. And it's much tougher to make the object ball. Just follow through. Keep your head down. Body still. And know that you're going to pocket this ball. Yeah, I think he was worried about the stripe down there. But you'll notice the angle that he had laid really well. So if he puts a little more effort into pocketing the ball versus getting that cue ball safe, I think he could have picked up a couple balls there. I know Tony can make that shot. He's left Sky the bank on the seven. Now this is one you want to hit more pocket speed. Sky's hit it very poorly. Has he left a cross bank for Tony? So when you're crossing this ball, you just want to aim thinner than you think. Nine times out of ten, an amateur player is going to cross this bank and hit it to the bottom rail. Let's see how Tony plays it. You, over, you want to overcut it a little. Well, he's overcut it with the wrong English there. You want to use left in that bank there. Left to send the cue ball up towards the 13. That way it's free.
Uh, he's telling me he's telling me what kind of trap Tony had him in right after the break. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Yeah, he was telling me he was in a dead trap. He said it was so good, I'm not sure it was intentional. I'm not sure it wasn't intentional. Yeah, this guy played to just pocket the ball. Scott are playing for one. I know one thing. This is a kick. Uh, Tony gets a kick out of this. Um, and, and it's pretty cool, right? get to play some of the best players in the world, especially Skyler. He's a class act. Fun to be around. He's hit this a little short. Now, I get the deer and headlights effect, uh, but, but once again, I'm commentating this a little bit for Tony as well, right? I, I want to point out some things that I think he should do because we travel to a lot of tournaments together. And here he definitely needs to go to the, with the 14 and just level out once again. You, you can't worry about anything else. And he looks like he's elevating. And there's no reason to elevate there. You need them all. You could level out. Your cue ball is going to go one rail to the top long rail, the top right long rail, and come out to the center. That way if you get it close or make it, you've got a bank on the 10. Go ahead and let Skyler cut that stripe by the side pocket you got to put some pressure on him, but that's okay. I mean, he doesn't play the game. And he's actually kind of doubled Skyler up on the bank with the 14 and 10 now being there. So it's okay, but you always want to look for a way you can get one or two balls. Um, or, excuse me, more than one ball when you have the opportunity and you're, and you're down in the ball count. So here I think you've just got to, I would play the 10 to the lower end of the table to, to Tony's right or left. Just like so. A little, a little thin. He caught it a little thin. And Sky's going to have a three rail on the 13. If Tony leaves the cue ball over on this right rail down here, he's going to protect against that. But now Tony's going to be in trouble if this ball doesn't go. But it did. Well, it didn't. That's not nice of Skyler. I think it would have been less painful if that ball drops. I don't think Tony can get through there to follow it in, but really that's no good anyway. Skyler with ball in hand on the 10 or 14 is uh, like heading to the electric chair. I don't know. Tony might have a double bank on the 14 or the 10, whichever he chooses. I don't think that uh, I don't think the cut in the 11 is going to going to be the shot. He might get it closer, hang it, could make it. Yeah, tough shot. Nice effort. Skyler's going to take game number one. This is the Derby City Classic 2023. We are in round two. TB has one loss. Skyler. No losses. I am your host, Scott Frost. Do us a favor. Like and subscribe. Head to Railbirds TV on YouTube. Like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell for us. Skyler to break them. You notice a lot of these guys breaking more from the center of the table, and that's that's got a lot to do with that new cloth, right? Putting less pressure on that second ball, which relieves the corner ball from coming out. Scott said, or Skyler said, Scott showed me something about that break a long time ago. Oh boy, that's one thing I never had a problem with is is teaching my youngers um, the game. I really, I had no fear of that. I don't, I know that there's going to be a time in my life where I'm passed up and I, I don't know if, if people, some people can come to terms with that. So I do know where I stand and I want to see this game grow. That's why I made power one pocket two and one. 
pretty containing shot right there. I mean, he could have followed forward with the six ball, banking at two rails, and maybe sending his cue ball under the 13. That shot's not bad, though. I think Sky's going to thin off of one of these balls, possibly. Or he's going to thin on the six. He's going to cut the six towards his hole, play the cue ball two rails up towards the corner. Or... Yeah, just like so. So he's trying to, he hit it a little fat. Hit it a little fat. He didn't want Tony to be able to see any part of that six. Now the six being where it's at, Tony might have an opportunity to roll up on the eight, pushing the five out in front of his pocket. Not exactly sure how that's laying. If he could roll forward just a hair and snooker him on the two. The three I don't think passes. He's got to be real careful here if he's kicking this. Yeah. Yeah, I think he's I think he's he's got to catch the other side of that 6. I know Sky can cut this 13. I know he could spin it in. But I don't know if he's going to if he's going to do that to Tony the Tiger. Yeah, he's going to go ahead and elect to thin off the 1. Playing the one three rails. He's got the kiss. I actually remember standing there watching him shoot that shot. And I'm like, why didn't he cut the 13? Hmm. I don't know if the 12 banks, if you could stiffen it up. See, I just want Tony to be aggressive with Sky. I feel like that's the only way you can win. The 7 definitely banks. You can shorten the 7 up or stiffen it. Um. He's looking for a defensive play. Eh. Mm, I don't know if that's going to get there. I think well, Sky could definitely spin this in as well, but the issue with that is he's going to come into the back of the 13, so I don't know that there's a huge future there. Looking at the stack. He could come off the 14, or he could 3-rail the 10. Follow forward. He's 3-rail the 10. He doesn't want to catch that 1. It's a big break for Tony Bloom. And it's got the right angle. He can follow down behind the 6 and 14 1-rail and get a bank on the 3. Uh, see the angle it's taken? He could have followed down. He, he overcut it just a hair. That angle would have worked. He did get it close. That's not terrible. I don't know that Sky can make the combo or not. It's very close. If he can't, that's okay. But my question is what happens if you pocket the one? I would have go ahead. I would have let my stroke out there and come on down. I don't know that Sky can get to this three this combination. He's looking to jump the edge of the six. This guy can't kick at the one long rail. I mean, I guess he could, but the problem with long rail kicking at the one is you leave Tony a bank on the three. This guy looking at the six, 13, three combo rail first on the six. The problem with that shot is everything's going away from your pocket. The, th the 13's coming down to the long rail. Um, excuse me, to the bottom rail. And the 6 is coming down to the bottom rail. Unless he's trying to play this. Uh, oh, he's looking for position on the 14. Notice how everything kind of went away. But he did miss the 3. And the reason he missed the 3 is because he hit it too full. Otherwise, the 6 drops down and heads towards where the 13 is now as well. So Tony's got an opportunity here to come off that six softly. Come off the left hand side, excuse me, the right hand side of the six softly with a little outside English and tuck that cue ball under the three. Or if he's worried about the scratch, just come off softly. 
and keep him snookered and protect that one ball. He's definitely got room to do this. That's That corner pocket is not in play. He's got a good opportunity to trap him here. Let's see how he plays it. He's having a hard time reaching it. I don't like that. Mm -mm. You want to hit to the right side of the six, nice and easy. That works out. He's he's actually covered him up. I think you trap him a little better. He's covering him up on the 14 bank. So, I think you trap him a little better with outside and tuck him under the three, like I was saying, because he can't do this, but he's, well, I thought he might have missed that kick. Well, looky here, Tony Bloom, Tony the Tiger, with a one to nothing ball lead. Yeah, I don't know, this might be a kiss. Oh, he's missed the kiss. Nice effort there. He's looking to pocket that three off the bottom of the stack. Skyler going to look at this seven. Problem with this seven is he knows he's going into that four ball. It's not free. Oh, he's hit it really nice. Did he come away with a shot? Oh, you can see the two, so look at the way these balls are laying. He didn't want to get elevated, that's for certain. He's overstroked that ball. He didn't want to get elevated. And look at how high that bridge is. He's coming back for the three next, but he's overcut the room rent. And Tony's got a big opportunity here. 13, 11, 3, 15, 5, 9, 4. He needs the bridge, or he's getting his extension. You just want to draw back a little bit, probably three or four inches, drop drop draw just where you're kind of stun drawing it this would be just a touch of left with a touch of low he's got the extension and the bridge now this is that situation there you go I like that I felt like he could, felt like I feel like he's gonna get a little more out of the cue ball with that you don't want to over hit this uh oh He's double hit the double hit the ball, so he owes two now. He's he owes the ball he made and the ball he has in the hole. So Tony Bloom will go back to even here. Unless I'm incorrect, maybe. Oh, Skyler didn't Skyler didn't call that. It looked like he double hit the ball, but we'll. We'll carry on. Tony cutting at the, the 11. Doesn't want to get straight on the 9. It's a pretty good shot right there. So now he can put a touch of a touch of left-hand English on this ball. Let's say three-quarter. Just a hair above center left. You're going to drop down below the 3 and come out. Yeah, that's the only issue with that. If you don't catch the eight and you overhit it, you're going to double yourself up. You can't double yourself up by going forward with a touch of the left. You come down behind the three. If you overhit it, you get a shot on the 15. Now you've got a decision to make. Do you play the combination or do you remove the 10? This situation, I'm personally going to remove the 10. I might even come off the 15 and put him behind the 10. Play the 15 off the 3. That way the 15's headed your way. And try and tuck him behind the 10. Now you got to protect against the bank here. Well, he's done that. Nice work, Tony Bloom. Four balls to two. So Tony's... Tony's uh, beat him to the shot. 
the first two games. At six and ten, I don't know what those look like up there, but wonder if they're going to come into play here in the future. Sky electing to push the three up table. Has he left a bank on the eight? Oh, he's left him a bank on the eight. So here's where you put pre well, that's what I'm talking about with that six and ten. I think the ten throws in. So if you do bank this eight, you've got a stun draw it over between the ten and fifteen. Yeah, you really got to be careful here. This is kind of what we call a trap. Uh, but Tony knew exactly what he was doing. Uh, Skyler's going to be forced now to put the three back up table again. Looks like he's trying to do more than... Okay. I didn't think he was going to be able to do much more than what he could. Or what he did. And Tony can backspin this bank on the five. Skyler's given up a lot of shots so far this match. You can draw this bank, Tony. A little low right. Don't overhit it. Ten people have a tendency to hit that too hard. Oh, he's hit it well. The spin didn't tank there. He actually hit that bank very well. Actually hit the point where I thought he would, uh, where I thought he would make it with that spin, and it didn't take. Skyler banking at this three, or is he crossing a four over? Hit crossing a four over, he better watch out. Well struck. But one thing he has done is he's tied that combination up. The eight and four. Notice the six, eight, four, ten. Those are all clustered up over there. And this is where Tony needs to manufacture something if he can. Staying passive with those balls on Skyler's side isn't going to get you very far. Skyler's so creative and so aggressive. I know he's going to roll this three up. It's okay for now. Skyler's going to bank at that stripe. The top part of the table, which is the 12. Definitely going to bank at it. want to thank Railbirds TV again for bringing us the stream. Awesome to have more than one stream in the tournament room. Tony going to bank this back up into the cluster. This is okay. Skyler's going to get this five down, I believe, somewhere towards uh, the lower rail on his side of the table. Oh, he's going into all of them. It's even better. I didn't know that he could manufacture that angle. So this is kind of what I was leading to just a couple innings ago. If Tony doesn't manufacture something here soon, and he has it right here, he can elevate playing the 12 like you're crossing the 15 and just stop your cue ball right there on the bottom of that 4. Yeah, that's just too passive. It's going to hurt. But he's learning. He, he doesn't play the game. And I think he's done a mighty fine job so far uh, just hanging in there with Sky. Uh, that's a nice punch shot there. Sky gets the most out of that shot. Yeah, he's going to come over for the 5 8. Wiped its feet. Skyler playing for 4. Assuming he's going to get an angle on this eight and probably try and come into the back of the three. 
He could get on the four if he'd like. Either one is okay. The problem is you can't get all the way out if you get on the four. I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind coming into the back of those balls, but he's going to go ahead and take the four for now. I don't think the 12 goes, but he can take the four and then take the double bank or force follow behind him. Oh, okay, he came away with a shot. He's got a shot on the six. It definitely passes. The 10 is clear as well. The scratch is not in play. Skyler playing for one to take a two to nothing lead in round two of the 2023 Derby City Classic. Nicely hit. Two to nothing, Mr. Woodward. I am your host, Scott Frost. Let's check this replay out. Look at this hit. Look at that cue ball bend. Just about clipped the three, and I believe that's what he was playing. Pocketed to 10 next, which was another pure shot. I am your host, Scott Frost. Thank you all for tuning in. Having a little fun on this one. I know Tony is, and I know Skyler is. Tony needs to put the rack on him, like he did the first game. <laughs> Got to give one more shout out to RoyaltyCore.com, Julie Bloom, Tony Bloom with Mohawk Metal. Both family-owned and operated companies out of Eugene, Oregon. And both great companies. See how he hits these. So that's the only issue on new cloth when you're putting a cue ball all the way over there. If you don't hit that head ball full enough, you're going to put too much pressure on the second ball, which instantly shoots that corner ball out. And that's what's happened here. Skyler can clearly cut the eight, but he's looking at playing the six into the stack, maybe. <clears throat> I think he's got to shoot the eight here. He's going to try and go up and down. He didn't want to run into that. I think he's, I think he's being a little friendly to Tony. He must have fouled. He must have hit something, maybe a shirt or cue on the way back. Tony's got. I don't know what Tony's got. He's got some options. The eleven definitely pockets. The five definitely pockets. I wouldn't mind shooting the five here. I think the five carries. Possibly a free shot if you roll it. It's going to come off the edge of the 9, maybe the edge of the 14, and drop below the 1 and 10. It's a possibility. The only problem with the 6 is there's no real future there. It looks pretty straight. And it's long. And that shot's as tough as the 5 or tougher. Shooting the 11 is not going to be free, I don't believe. it. Actually, it might carry that same angle, too. Yeah. I don't I don't think I would have played the two ball. It's okay though. He did the best he could do at his turn. Skyler's gonna shoot the fourteen and run into the four, opening the balls up. Once again he's overcooked it. He's elevated on snow. He's gonna try and cut the one and come out for the twelve. He's hit it real well. Did he did he get there? He did. He's going to run into the four here or go down. He's running into the 11. Now he's got to make a decision. He can cut the 10 and come to the 13. Yeah, and that's what he's done. How do he hit it? Perfect. He's carried the angle to drop down on the 8 or 15, whichever he chooses. Perfect. He's carried this angle to split the four and three and probably get a shot on the three as well. Oh, well, it's kind of stayed there, but he does have the four three combo. Skyler playing for three. 
boy, he doesn't want to make a mistake here. Tony's got five, six balls right in front of his pocket. Uh-oh. Oh, he got fortunate. He made the 11. I know Tony was going to take advantage of that. Skyler still playing for three. He owed one due to the foul early. Well, you have to pocket this three ball. That's pretty much all you can do. And leaving the cue ball right there is okay this time because of where the six is. Yeah, you've, you've got to pocket this three ball. If you feel confident enough in pocketing the three, I think he can see all of it. And if he can't, he can definitely spin and pocket it. But if you can see all of the ball and feel confident enough, you could... Yeah, I don't want to do anything with the 15 here. Yeah, that's okay, but the problem with it is, is you're removing a ball that you need in the future. I wouldn't have had a problem with Tony Massaying that 15 and, and spinning the six, uh, three in, and if, if you follow it in, the three spots up, so Sky wouldn't have had anything. But now Tony loses his position, needing, uh, needing seven balls. You really want to keep that pressure on your man. Here I'd take a look at coming off the two, putting the five kind of in front of your pocket, maybe playing the cue ball up behind the seven and 15. You know, you're not going to hit it real hard, but you're definitely going to open that nine, two, and five up. And uh, if you hit it a little hard, the cue ball is just going to go to the top rail. Yeah, he looks like he might be three railing this six. Don't see a future there. Well, he almost got him behind the 7 and 15. It's one way to do it. Miscued. So the 9, the 9, 2, and 5 are not doing Tony any favors. Pretty sure Tony will be happy with this match, though. He, he's definitely been in the game a couple times and had good ball counts. Scotters really hit this nicely, and it held up, but here's the problem. Tony didn't elect to come off the 2, 9, and 5 earlier, so those balls stay tied up. And I believe he's doubled up on the on the 4. I'm pretty sure he can actually pocket the 4. Oh, yeah, he can definitely pocket the 4. Pretty much all you've got here. There's no future in two railing the 15 because you can't get but one. There's really no future in cross banking the stripe on the spot because you can only get one. So at this point, you've got to prolong the game and hope Skyder makes some type of nair and just pocket the four. I wouldn't roll it in. I wouldn't follow it in. Yeah, the only reason I wouldn't follow it in is because Sky would have ball in hand and cut the 15 in. So that turned out to be the best thing he could do. Tony's got to get that cluster of balls there opened up. That's numero uno. Job number one. This guy's just going to push him up table. Oh yeah, he can afford he can afford to do that actually with those balls tied up. There's nothing wrong with that. If I'm Tony, I'm two railing this seven short and two railing the seven short into the nine two five and sticking that cue ball right there on the top rail and putting the pressure back on Sky. It looks like it's laying really well to do it. Uh, go ahead and let Sky shoot from the end rail with those balls opened up using the fifteen as a blocker. He's looking at it. Go ahead, don't second guess yourself. Two rail that 15 and just play your cue ball right now. He's following it. Uh uh. Yeah, he's just uh, lost the plot there, as they say in Europe. It was a fun match to commentate. I really enjoyed it. I know Tony Bloom enjoyed it. Skyler's a great sport. Thank you all for tuning in. Until next time. 
Congratulations to Skyler. Tony's eliminated. Thanks for tuning in to Railbirds TV. I'm your host, Scott Frost, the Freezer, and we are out.